Good afternoon, radio audience. And again, we want to thank you again for tuning in to the Unadulted Radio Truth broadcast. Uh, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, again, at any point in time during this broadcast, can pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your questions, and we'll listen to your comments as well. And if you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 2 and verse number 13 through 17. We're going to continue with our subject of, and he opened through the tables. He overthrew, talking about Jesus, he overthrew the tables. And what we've decided to do over the next, next couple of weeks, uh, months, we're going to deal with various subjects uh, that is plaguing the church of Christ. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that after I read John chapter 2, verse 13 through 17, okay. where the Bible says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold dove, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Uh, again, we have uh, been dealing with this subject. He overthrew the tables for the last three weeks. And if you tuned in on last week, we dealt with the subject of selling books in the gatherings. We talked about how that goes against uh, the, the doctrine of Christ, uh, the will of God for individuals or brethren uh, to, in the gathering, uh, to set up bookstores to sell uh, merchandise uh, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we did not say that it was wrong to sell books. However, uh, it is a problem when you have brethren uh, who are trying to make money uh, in the gathering at the building uh, where the saints congregate to worship God uh, and to do the things that honor God. These individuals are, in fact, making the house of God uh, a house of merchandise. And so those were things we talked about on last week. And for those of you who missed last week, Brother Javier Frias does a wonderful job in putting these things on YouTube. Amen. And so if you go back, you can look at YouTube and you can leave your question and your comments there. Now we have some callers on the line, 281-837-2222. And at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to take the caller's question and comment. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Um, I'm calling because I would like to make a comment about the gentleman that called in from California last week. Yes. Uh, when he was making the statements about him, uh, when he had said that the church has to have a board of trustees in order to operate. Now, I would like to first start by quoting Matthew's chapter 22 and verse 21. Okay. When Jesus said, render that which, uh, when Jesus had said, render that which is unto Caesar, uh, that which is Caesar unto Caesar, and that which is God unto God. Now, mm -hmm. I know that we worship in buildings that the church purchased, and we have to pay taxes on that building. Okay, so we render that unto the government because that's what we owe them. All right. But also, you know, he had made some statements about obeying the laws of the land, and this is the reason why we have to have a board of trustees. Now, we have to remember that there are laws that man has made that don't necessarily line up with the will of God. Amen. And those laws, we cannot obey. We cannot obey anything that doesn't line up with the will of God. Amen. So for this gentleman to make the statement that he made it, I don't know if he had the opportunity to read that paperwork that's submitted to the state. Because along with that paperwork that they they fill out, okay, for this board of trustees, they also have to have bylaws to go along with them. So I would suggest to him that he get those you know, that paperwork and get those bylaws and read them to, and make sure he knows what they say you know, before he calls in to make a comment like that. Yeah. Because as Brother Ozan showed last week on the show that the church is already considered non-for-profit. The only time that the church is not a non-for-profit is like you brothers were saying, if they begin to sell merchandise out of the church. Right. So where he's getting his information from, I truly don't know because I would like for him to go into, Bi into the Bible and show me where there's any offices or anything else in the church that consists of a president, a vice All president, right. and so on and so forth. Amen. But until then, that's just something we cannot obey because 
once you sign that paperwork and send it in to the state, basically you're signing the church over to the state. Now you have to obey whatever the state tells you to do. Mm, all right. Yes. So I had to call in to God address that, and I do this in love Amen. because we need to know the truth, just like Jesus said, "You shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free." Amen. And I don't know if he had a chance to take a look at that paperwork, or this is something that some brother has told him that may be sitting on this board of trustees or whatever, yeah. but he really needs to, to, to read this paperwork and then read the Bible and see if they line up together. Right. Also, he made a comment about God's government. Now, I don't know if he had the opportunity to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28, Amen. where the word government is used there with things that God has instituted within the church, his government. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that he go back and he study on that and, and find out that as well. Amen. Also, I would like to uh, make a comment about the subject that you brothers were talking about with these schools. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is being sent through different congregations, but just today, we received a letter in the mail. I know it was probably already there because it's Sunday and the mailman uh -huh. doesn't run. But we received a flyer from Southwest, Southwest Christian College asking for a thousand people to donate a thousand dollars to wow. assist their school with their graduates and so on and so forth. Wow. So, you know, I know wow. you brothers are going to get to that and elaborate wow. on that as well, but I, I've been waiting all week so I can call in and address oh, this. That, 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 that man, young man called <laughs> in last weekend with the comments he made. And I thank you, brothers, thank for allowing brother me Green. the time, and I'm going to hang up and continue to listen. Okay, love you, Brother Green. God yes. bless your work and your labor of love. Brother God bless you, Brother Green. And yes. I want to show this on the screen. Brother Fritz is going to look at it. And I'm going to read it to you all live Amen. right now. But you'll be able to put it up on YouTube. Amen. And the question that you can pose if you're desirous to know the IRS rules over everywhere of America, including Hawaii and Alaska. Right. And so the idea is with this statement, I'm going to read now the question uh, that is before it that you can put in. Does a church have to file taxes with the IRS. Now I'm going to read you the answer and you'll get the same answer. Additionally, on top of tax exemptions, that's on top of that, churches, unlike other exempt organizations, have been graced with several additional benefits. And we can thank God for that. Amen. For instance, Amen. churches are not required to file a tax exemption application with the IRS upon formation they are not pre to prepare and file an annual information return with the IRS, i.e. Form 990. And so we have to understand that this statement is being uh, listed for you all to understand that the government of this country, now Brother Fritz is going to share some things with us of, of another place, but of this country does not require, if you are a church, now all these uh, places with these different names, the House of Love and all that. If you're not listing yourself as a church, you're in another category. But we talked about the organizations that we're a part of, Henry and I, Amen. Brother Frizz and Brother Green. We are of the church Amen. of Christ. Amen. And so therefore, we don't file that. So all this stuff you hear about these guys uh, don't fall into the trap of the IRS. Listen, the IRS is not trying to trap anybody. Man. But I'm going to tell you this, and to the saints too, if you're making money, you better be able to, if you're a church, you better understand you're not to profit. Amen. And you guys selling those books. Man. Things of that nature. You need to watch yourself because you are asking for trouble. Because right. you are profiting. That's and you're going to have to understand something. The IRS is not an enemy. I'm trying to collect Amen. money for this government of which God told us to pay tax. Now, I'm going to read you. So y'all need to be careful what you say about the IRS because you understand we are free speakers and we pay for this our time. Amen. But we don't teach false doctrine. Amen. So any government collection of taxes, you need to respect and understand that. Now, I'm going to read for you Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Romans 13, 1. For there is no power but of God. If there is a government, it is of God. He's Amen. not agreeing with everything every government does, but it is of God to keep order physically, to keep things balanced. And the powers that be are ordained of God. 
Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive themselves down next. You're going to get more than just going to jail if the IRS uh, know you're doing something crooked. You're going to go to hell, other than jail. Verse 3, for the rulers are not a terror to do good work. They're not going to fuss at you for doing good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God. You know we talk about the IRS. The U.S. government, any other government, this is the minister, not no preacher. It's about the minister that's doing the work of God to be for good. That's more than just the police. Uh, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he bear not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenge to execute wrath upon them that do evil. Yeah, they're going to come and confiscate your properties, your money, and garnish your wages and everything else. Uh, look what the Lord says we are obligated to do. Verse 5. Wherefore you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay you tribute. That is... Also, for they are God's ministers. They have to eat too. The IRS man got to eat. The president got to eat. Everybody got to eat. Man, no one lives off of air. Attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their due. See, what is due? That's the key. Yeah, there are many tax write offs. And they don't have to give us that. That's a blessing. But there are many tax write offs and things that you can take advantage of that they offer. And they know what you're doing, but don't do nothing crooked. Don't try to be no church and then be a fake church. Some mm -hmm. of you are getting in trouble because you are fake with the sign Church of Christ. He says, Tribute to whom tribute is due. See, that's different taxes. You get on a toll road, you don't want to pay the toll, get off it. Get off the toll road. Don't get on the people road if you're not going to pay the tax. Custom to whom custom is due. If, if you're going to go to a town and say, well, you got to pay tax in here. Don't go to the town if you're not going to pay the tax. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. He says, oh, no man, nothing but to love another. For he that loveth another hath to fulfill the law. You know, people are always criticizing. How do you think the government can build a street? You whine about a hole in your road because they tore your tie up. They don't have a business. Your taxes. If you look up on the internet, it's a very simple question. What is the government's revenue? Tax money. The law says pay it. What's due? So if you do what is right before the law, then the law will bless us. That's how we're blessed. We don't speak against any government. We stand by what the God of heaven has said. We're real teachers. We're not some yeah. fake church. We're real members of the Lord's church. And so the individual that called last week, if he's talking about the state tax, of California, which I know not. I know he's not talking about the U.S. tax system, because this just said a church doesn't even have to file. It's automatically exempt, in addition to all other areas of tax. But the key is, is that we don't file no report, so therefore you don't need a board of trustees. But let me share with you, if you should go to a church, and you're a member, or you're an evangelist, or a Bible teacher, what have you, you go to a congregation, and they already have a 5013C. This is how you protect the church from that individual who may be a president or who may be called the CEO or COO. What you do is, is you take bylaws, but not your bylaws right. in the church. I'm going to give you a good Amen. one you can give him and tell him if he don't sign this, he can't hold that position. If you do have a system that requires you to have a board because you already bought into this thing and you borrowed money from the government or something to that effect, or you, you're one of those ones that give out of uh, food products, if you're a church like that, and listen, brethren, we're trying to help. So we understand some things, systems are already in place. This is what you do. Look at, if you will, 1 Peter chapter number 5. He will tell you what to say, and then you make him sign this so he cannot take the church over. He may be listed as the CEO or the president, and you think he can't, yeah, and the government will support him because it's been filed that way. But this is how you protect. Look what he says. Chapter 5, verse 1 of 1 Peter, the elders which are among you, I exhort, whom also am elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partake of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in sounds of the flock. When he signs this, you make sure you understand. You understand you cannot run this place. You, you cannot change what we are preaching about. If you don't agree, get out and leave. If we can read it, 
We've got to believe it and we'll do it. That's how you help your brother not become a Judas. And you can still have your 5013C. But for someone to be saying that, it must be done that way. And one of the things I want to address that that brother was wrong on, what Green touched on, Ephesians 4.11, because he left me a message too. Uh, he's a wonderful guy, I know him. But let me tell you, wonderful guys can be wrong. Amen. I've been wrong, and I'd like to think I'm a wonderful guy. Amen. But I've never been wrong before, and have been corrected. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. This is akin to 1 Corinthians 12.28. This is the government of of God for all the churches. Amen. And one of the things Amen. our brother is confused on that call from the California area is that he, he's thinking this is a government instituted that somehow is for them only. It is not. He says right. God gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, not the saints at Ephesus, for the work of the ministry, not just the ministry at Ephesus, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is larger than that which is only at Amen. Ephesus. Till we all, all is bigger than what's at Ephesus, come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. So this is talking about all the saints. So we Amen. thank Brother Green for that. Amen. And we want to thank our brother for calling last week because he may have thought we were in error in some way, form, or fashion. But he asked us to group together Romans 13 with Ephesians 4. And we just did. I'm going to give you one more. I'm going to actually read 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And I'm going to get out the way and let these brethren do what they do best. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. And Henry has done a magnificent job in teaching on this for all of us. And God sent some in the church. See, that's God. That's not right. man. God sent some in the church. First apostles. Secondarily prophets, those two are dead and extinct. Thirdly teachers, still in existence. After that, miracles, gone. 1 Corinthians 13, read about it. Then gifts of healing, gone. 1 Corinthians 13, read about it. Helps, still here today. Governments, still here today. That's what some of you brethren are wrong, which will include evangelists other than you, Bible teachers other than you, uh, deacons other than you, and elders other than you. And so he says, diversities of tongues, which is gone. 1 Corinthians 13. He says, are all apostles? Absolutely not. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? This is rhetorical. Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, he says, and yet show I you a more excellent way. That's what he's going to get into. So we just want to let you all know. We understand circumstances exist. Yeah. Brother Frizz is going to step forward and give Amen. us information about a government that is a little bit different, but yet they too are of God, but they're a little bit different. So let's not chunk rocks. And he helped me out with this subject last week, and I thank you. Go Amen. ahead, Brother Frizz. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Brother uh, Ozan. You know, when we look at the scriptures and the different type of trials that the saints had to go through in the Bible and what type of trials we have to go through today, uh, there's different saints throughout the world that's going through different trials, uh, different types of rules that the, the devil is trying to put saints under. So I was talking to Brother Ozan, uh, the, some of the saints in Colombia had to deal with months and months of uh, going to court as the government there uh, desired to accumulate all the saints' uh, uh, monies together or mm. the, uh, the amount of money that they made per year uh, at, at that area. And so they had to do uh, courts for months and for months to try to fight that situation because they tried to uh, get uh, ahead of, like in the Roman government where the Pope, the Ark, uh, bishop, the cardinals, that that church, the Catholic Church, was actually copy and pasted from uh, the Roman Empire at that time frame, where the Roman Empire copied their infrastructure of rule as government, and then they copy and pasted it at, in the form of a religion as a Catholic Church, and so <clears throat> they wanted to make it easier. Uh, in that area for them to know how much money they're making at this congregation, what kind of business they're doing here or there. And so they uh, found out, found a way to uh, separate themselves uh, from other churches, from other saints as well, where there's an individual where the elder or the, the minister uh, or the deacon has the ability to uh, give the report to the government without having to collect all or collect data from all the saints uh, in that area, and so therefore uh, sinning against God. And mm -hmm. so I want to deal with the subject because uh, Joseph, in, in Joseph, in Genesis chapter 45, uh, verse 26, he was a governor over all the land of Egypt. Amen. Now, he was a physical governor over all the land of uh, the Egypt, and Pharaoh had put him in that position. In Genesis 47, 26, uh, Joseph made a law 
He said, 47, 26, he made a law over Egypt uh, for the saints, uh, not for the saints, but for the Egyptians to give their cattle, their horses, their asses, their land of people, priests. But the priests were not, they didn't have to give their land out uh, for the, the food. Mm -hmm. It says, Joseph uh, gave seed and the people had to give back a fifth part to Pharaoh and they kept a fourth part for themselves. And this was the law that Joseph made as a governor uh, for the Egyptians concerning the, the famine that was at that time frame. Now, one thing that Joseph as governor could not do, he could not set up a spiritual governance or spiritual law uh, for the Israelites. In Genesis 48, 17, uh, it says that uh, Jacob, uh, I'm sorry, that Israel, he wanted to put his hand or give the blessing to Ephraim instead of Manasseh, the younger son. It says that Ephraim was greater than Manasseh. And now Joseph, what he tried to do is he said, not so, my father. He said, not so, my father. He wanted uh, him to put the right hand over his older son, Manasseh, uh, to bless him. But Jacob, which was in agreement with God, said that, nay, Joseph, but Ephraim will be greater than Manasseh. So even though uh, he was a physical governor, uh, he, he did not have the ability to change laws in the, in the spiritual Amen. realm. Good and point. so the, the preacher that I spoke to uh, in that area, uh, overseas in South America, uh, he is an elder. He, he is a, he's an elder, and he desires that that be set up in every church of Christ, as elders, deacons, preachers. And the idea is that in the same situation where Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 1, I want to read that because Daniel was a preferred president above all the presidents at Amen. that time frame. Amen. And not only did he rule in Babylon, but he ruled also when Darius came and took over uh, Babylon. Now in Daniel chapter 6, verse 1, the scripture reads, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might g give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Amen. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents. So Daniel was a president of the physical realm, Amen. but not of the spiritual realm where he can create laws that do not exist. And so we have also in Esther, uh, where Esther chapter 5, verse 3 and verse 6, uh, the king Ahasuerus told Esther that she would be able to have half of the kingdom. Now remember, Ahasuerus ruled from India all the way to Ethiopia. That's 120 provinces. So that, that means that she would be able to uh, have uh, 60 provinces, which is half of 120. And the idea is that she did not create laws as well that contradicted God. So whatever whatever position, uh, whatever position uh, God has you as, you cannot, like Jesus said in uh, the scriptures, uh, he said, whose superscription and image is this? So whose image is this? It belongs to either Julius Caesar in that time frame. Today, whose superscription is it? It's George Washington. It's Benjamin Franklin. That's the image that's on there. Mm -hmm. We live in this area of, of the location. And he said, be not called rabbi. Also, Matthew 23, verse 8, you are brethren. So whether you the government desires to uh, have you in a position, whether it be trustee or like Brother Ozan just mentioned, uh, president, whatever position the government tries to put you in, to be to some type of uh, intermediate or to be a go-between between the church and uh, and also the state. Now, this is not contradicting God's word where it's a sin, where they implement business like Brother uh, Henry just read concerning selling things. We're not dealing with, with that subject. That's that's a sin against God to, to be uh, in business in that fashion. But the idea is that be not called president in the church, be not called trustee in the church, be not called uh, sergeant, be not called vice president in the church. Though the government may give you a title, you cannot present that before the brethren Amen. as a, a form of power that you have over them. You cannot present that before them. The Bible says, be not called rabbi. He says, ye are brethren. You are a brethren before them, whatever the government calls you, that's their title. The titles that and the things that we have in the church... It's authorized by Christ, whether it be elder, teacher, yeah. preacher, or deacon. And so you cannot have the government set you up in a position or be an intermediate in between and you somehow be high-minded or puffed up and think that now you have a power over the saints based on what the government right. uh, gave you. And so this is the deal that we have. You know, we know we have different scenarios uh, where, uh, you know, there's investigations where denominational churches like Creflo Dollar, because of their 
uh, their jets and their, their cars and their big houses where the government investigates and, and seeks to uh, go in, in between. Uh, but the idea is that in our business, which is our business is to do the will of the Father, Man. is to not sell in the ch kingdom where those things like taxes or where we have to give an account before the government has to be attached. That's what you call being entangled Amen. from the things of this Amen. world because we are involved in the things of uh, the Spirit. Man. And so I just wanted to add that because there's oh, different yes, saints bro. that's going through different trials in all over the world. <laughs> uh, not all saints have this uh, situation. 501c3, as we have nonprofit, like we have in America, there's other countries that have to fight and, and deal with the devil's works at that era. So at this time, I'm going to call us 2137 Thank you, Hobby. Yeah, yeah God man. bless you. I'll tell you, that is as fine a lesson as I've heard Amen. to help our minds stay focused and audience. I hope you appreciate that. And our brethren around the world, I hope you can understand that you just take these laws from God, as Brother Fritz has taught, and use them to surround that brother that may have to have that for you to function in a church. The, the saints were under a lot of adverse circumstances by foreign government. But if you notice, he mentioned all these great men who were involved with the, both the physical government, and, and, and that was a blessing both to the physical and to the saints, but yet they did not exercise that power. So please hold that. I want to give you Luke chapter 3, as we have a few minutes uh, and if you will, look at verse number 12. People always want to bash organizations, but you have saints of God who were collecting money for the Roman government. The problem wasn't having that job. So you get mad at a guy for being an IRS agent, right? You get mad at him. He's a member of the church. He's your brother or your sister-in-law. You see him, you hug him every son and get mad when they come and have to collect taxes. How evil is that? He's got to eat too. Look at Luke 3. Let's see if John, who's the front runner, has a problem. Uh, verse uh, number 12. Then came also the publicans to be baptized. They want to be saved too. Now these are publicans who, they want to be baptized because they're already Jews, faithful in a sense, but now they want to be baptized because they want to be saved. So we're going to tell them, no, you bunch of money-hungry hogs. No, you can't do that. And he said unto him, Master, what shall we do? They asked, well, what do we do? Talking to John. And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed. Look, if the IRS is collecting that which you have agreed to live in this land to pay, how would an IRS agent that's a member of the church be a beast and a monster? You, you can't look at things that way, saints of God. And, and, and your heart and my heart is going to have to gravitate unto righteousness to understand things and to recognize that we're in a physical world as well as being in the kingdom of God. You must respect the laws that are before you. If you do not, that will be havoc brought into your life. And those of you that are members of the church and you have already orchestrated, maybe have your hands into government money, maybe you have uh, a setup to where I'm the government has told you that you have to provide a building for them to maybe put computers in to help children out to school or something. Look, it may be a great church that already has it. You may be faithful to the law, but you must set up parameters. We're not ignorant to these things that exist. You shouldn't have got in it. Yeah, you shouldn't have got in, but you're in it now until the contract runs out or until you pay them all of their money back. And now you must set up parameters where the individual who is over that will not take over the church because it is now listed as an entity that can come under question and follow the rules of the government. Amen. So guess who the government is going to stand by when you go to court? The CEO, the president, the COO of that organization of which is supposed to be the Church of Christ. And so now they're going to be able to block certain things. They may be able to tell you, hey, we're going to have to start to allow gay marriages here. Because you brethren have gotten in the money. I'm the president Amen. and I'm not going to jail for y'all. I've signed certain documents. So we're going to allow gay marriage. Guess what? Now you see the ramification right. and the trouble. And it's no sense in you getting angry with the U.S. government because they have looked at this and their idea is, look, these two people want to be married. And that's it. They're going to be able to take care of each other with insurance. And that's it. That's, they're not trying to preach the gospel. 
They're trying to maintain a country. You must obey the rule. So therefore, don't get in, don't be asking people for stuff of which requirements are attached. Remember yes, that. We need the faithful Romans with Romans 16, 16, the faithful saints, Romans 16, 16. Forgive me, the church of Christ salute you. Hey. Glad that, you know, Old Testament is for all learning, bro. That's you right, gave brother. great examples yes. of, yes. of, of people of God yes. uh, who were by governments put in positions. Yes. Uh, but their positions did not override uh, the yeah. governor's spirituality of God. Yeah. He did not make any it's rules problem. that sure. violate, although they labeled, they had a title for him, president, like you said. Daniel and, was. Uh, Daniel and, and Joseph whatnot. Was governor. And my governor. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what the world called him, but. It did not override the laws of God, brother. Y'all didn't. You're gonna take God. the government money and then you gonna tell them what to tell you. Now they didn't gave you the money. Yeah, yeah you paying it back, but yeah, you yeah, got their money, yeah, they, and they, you they, gonna they, tell they, they, them they that they can't tell yes. you that you must not discriminate against same-sex marriage. Look, man, don't take that money. That's right. You know, if you don't want to be a part of, because once you become a part of that system. It can spill. I'm not saying they're doing that. Yeah. I'm saying it can possibly spill over if they're pressured <clears throat> by the Supreme Court and others. Right. Y'all have got to get these churches in That's line. Right. You don't want them. You better collect some yeah, money. Man. Like you always ask for money. You better collect some money and pay that loan back yeah, yeah, in God, an expedited that, way. Right. Tell them, thank you. And May God be with up. you in your right. business. And tell the paper up and move <laughs> forward. Yeah, because you're not going to be able to disrespect them. We ought to obey God rather than man. But God did not tell you to intertwine That's yourself. Right. As you point out, Brother Fred, you get into that snare. Right, yeah. Now you're snared. And you will give an account at the judgment Amen. for having performed such an act of uh, marriage like that. So so the idea is, as Paul, Roman government had a lot of a lot of stuff. They kicked the but saints we, out. Yes, yeah, they had a lot of drama that they were doing. A lot Amen. of sinful acts. But Paul utilized the strength of his birth in Tarsus to show that, are you going to condemn me without a trial? Mm -hmm. I'm a Roman, Roman. citizen. That's and right. they snap to because they do respect their laws. And people, uh, every government that exists, whether it's in Turkey, whatever, they're going to honor their yeah. own laws. Right. And you can't get up there Call them a bunch of heathens on your way to hell. No, because see, you got hooked up right. with the heathen. Sure. You got his money, and you've benefited by it. So you better pay the people back quick as you can and move forward. Because this country and any other country in, we have saints all over. We have saints in Istanbul, That's everywhere. Right. And right. they are functioning very well. There's right. Brother Fred, saints in Columbus. And they're preaching the gospel like us and yep. baptized. They just have learned to go around that system. But the word of God will protect Amen. you. But, but these guys, it's going to come under scrutiny. You said in Three, four hundred books a year. Man, people can do addition. They know man, this guy's making money because that's a book that Barnes and Noble sells, mm -hmm. and, they, and you know they can tax us. So, man, you. That's why our brethren are always in trouble. That's right. Because they're greedy. They some of them for filthy yep. lucre. Yep. You know, and if you want that's to sell it. your book, sell it at Barnes and Noble. That's Nobody right. gonna buy it. That's right. You start doing things there, bringing your ideas, your wares. And selling them at the church, this is Walmart now, <laughs> and we and we want to know what Walmart made this yeah, month, right? Amen. amen. That's the government want to know. That's right, because they want they cut. They, right. Then they have a right. They have too. a right. That's, That's right. what the Bible exactly. says, you know. So amen. If, if everybody respects what God has said, That's right. well, then no honor is given to whom honor is due. Right. Why would everybody you have a Christian walking up to Donald Trump, the president, Obama, or Bush, whoever, cussing him out or disrespecting him, coming, you're nothing but a devil. Listen, man, this guy is not a gospel preacher. He is running a government, and he has homosexuals in the government. That's He's right. got everybody in the That's government. Right. He got saints and fake saints. That's right. His job is to keep the government the laws going. Right. He is not that That's a preacher. Right. And so it's trying right. to make this guy no preacher. No. And you have to honor him. That's right. When he come by, you're supposed to refer to him by who he He's is. No, hey, Donald, what's up? No, see, that? See, you see, now you don't understand Romans 13. Right. You're not respectful. That's right. You don't have respect for dignity. That's right. Nothing. That's right. And so this is what That's we need to stop in the church. Even with police over there. You know, there's some bad policemen, but yeah, even with course. saints out there, uh, bashing policemen yes. or kill policemen. You respect that authority. Yes, you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we need them. They're, they're in a the position to help us. You just exactly. do what's right. Exactly. They're not a terror to good works. That's what that's, I'm saying. That, that's yeah. right. You know, there's somebody going to come and say, you never gone to jail. you never done anything wrong. You've been an upstanding hug of thorn in jail. Nobody going to do that. <laughs> and the government will do nothing stupid like that. See, that's why our brethren get besides themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to watch what you're standing up for and so-called marching for. Because if you step on God's feet, 
and what he has said is wrong, you're going to pay it to Amen. God bless you. Amen.